Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Patch 14.2 has just been released, and although it's a small patch compared to the last one, it should shift the meta quite a bit, including reviving the long forgotten comp that was nerfed to the ground at the beginning of the set. So today we're going to go through the top 5 comps to climb ranked and how to play them at each stage of the game. Let's get into it. First up we have the Big Shot Ezreal comp, which has been a relatively strong comp up to this point, but only if you manage to get Heartsteel very early on. This was to get loot to compensate for the fact that the overall comp wasn't as overtuned as some of the full cost carry comps. With this patch, that's no longer the case as Ezreal himself has been buffed, as well as a buff to other big shots that you can slot in. This comp is very flexible as it can pretty much use any 4 or 5 cost frontline units you can find, along with big shots and jazz. Augments you want to look out for with this comp are any of the strong combat related ones such as Vampirism and Blistering Strikes, or any Econ Augments such as Escort Quest to allow you to hit level 8 as fast as possible. Frontline Augments such as Crash Test Dummies or Cybernetic Bulk are also great, as it allows you to be greedier with your frontline itemization in favour of AD items. For itemization, Ezreal really needs a mana generation item such as Blue Buff, then any other strong AD items such as Red Buff and Infinity Edge. You then want to prioritise any frontline unit that you 2 star first, ensuring that you have at least one armor shred item and one anti healing item equipped on your board. The early game options are quite flexible. Corky or Jinx are great item holders for the early stages, and then you can put in any other frontline units such as Sentinels, Guardians, or Bruisers. Heart Steel is by far the strongest start you can get, as it will allow you to get additional econ and items as you level, as well as making an easy transition into Ezreal at level 8. You want to prioritise Econ and Health, so just play your strongest board whilst trying to make your interest thresholds, so that you can get to level 8 as fast as possible. Going into the mid game, some strong boards to play are either big shots or rapid fires with a strong front line. You should be aiming to hit level 7 around stage 3-5, and if you manage to get Heart Steel in for the extra Econ or loot, then this will really help at level 8 once you roll down for your main board. Going into the late game, you want to be leveling to 8 around stage 4-1 to 4-5 and rolling for Ezreal and any other 4 or 5 cost frontline units you can find. You ideally want the big shot version of Ezreal Headliner, but don't pass on the Heartsteel one as it won't make a huge difference to your overall placement. Once you have your Ezreal and at least one frontline unit 2 starred and itemised, you can look to Econ back up and go to level 9 and cap out your board. This comp has a very high ceiling as you can play a lot of 5 cost units, so leveling to 9 will be the key to getting higher placements. You can pivot from this comp if you see Caitlyn headliner on your level 8 rolldown, and use Caitlyn as your main carry and Ez as your secondary carry. This does have a lower top 4 rate than the Ezreal carry comp, but good to go for when contested and have a weaker econ than the contesting players. A clever fox is never caught. Before we get into this next comp, I just want to say that if you find these guides helpful, I'd really appreciate you liking and subscribing as it goes a long way into supporting the channel. We've gained over a thousand subscribers in just over a week, which is an insane jump, but I know 98% of you that watch still haven't subscribed, so I know that number can go much higher. With that said, next up we have the KDA Ari comp, which already had a decent top 4 rate before the patch, but has now received a few small buffs to the superfan units, so it definitely hasn't got any weaker. This has been my go-to pivot comp when I get dropped a lot of AP items, and I'm heavily contested for TF and Karthus. But now with both of those comps have been nerfed, this will be my default go-to. There's two different variations, both with similar placement stats, which is this one, you can see here with 7 KDA, or a 5 KDA and 5 Spellweaver board where you drop Kaiser and Akali for Lulu and Sona. For augments, you want any of the premium AP related augments such as Jeweled Lotus or Magic Wand, or some of the trait specific augments such as Raise the Tempo. Outside of those, any econ or tank related augments for your frontline will work well. New Recruit is also a good pick here, as it allows you to go to 7 KDA and 5 Spellweaver at level 9, which is very strong. Itemization, you want either Blue Buff or Shoujin on Ari, and then Nash's Tooth. As we're playing Superfan, Ari will automatically get a death cap as long as you get her as your headliner. You should then focus on itemizing your tanks with Magic Resist Shred and Anti Heal. In the early game, look for a Superfan or Spellweaver start with a good AP item holder such as Annie. Both Kennen and Lilia received some small buffs this patch, so the Superfan start should be a little stronger than it was before. As this is a 4 cost carry comp, you want to follow the standard leveling pattern of hitting level 8 around stage 4 2 to 4 5 ensuring you make your interest thresholds whenever you can. Going into the mid game, you can either play a 5 Spellweaver or 5 KDA board with Superfan, 
These boards will give you the easiest transition into your final board and will save you from any complex roll downs and getting dizzy at level 8. Remember you will be selling your headliner at level 8, so don't get too attached to your current headliner and keep a 1 cost 1 until level 8. Lulu has received a large buff to her spell damage, so she'll be a great item holder throughout the mid game, and if you find enough copies of her naturally, I'd even suggest staying at level 7 and play a Lulu reroll comp. Going into the late game, you want to be hitting level 8 around 4-2 to 4-5, and rolling down for an Ari headliner. Once you hit, you should look to slot in either a KDA or Spellweaver, depending on the headliner version you get, so that you have both 5 Spellweaver and 5 KDA active. The majority of your units are low cost, but you should already have them 2 starred and be fairly stable to go to level 9. Pivoting from this comp depends on the items that you've built up until this point, but if you have just built the standard blue buff and Nashers, you can look at pivoting to Ezreal with Frontline, as both of those items work well on him or Jin. Fortune doesn't favor fools. Next up we have the return of the original overpowered comp of set 10, which is Jazz Emma. This dominated the meta for quite a while before getting gutted in patch 13.24. Patch 14.1 then brought a few buffs to bring it back in line with the other comps, but it has still gone fairly underplayed even though it has a 54% win rate and a 13% top 4 rate. 14.2 has given MF's ability a damage buff, and given that this comp already had a decent placement rate, it's going to perform even better. For augments, it's going to be similar to the Big Shot Ezreal comp in that you want to look for any of the strong combat related augments such as Vampirism or Blistering Strikes, but as this is a 3 cost reroll comp, picking any reroll augments such as Heroic Grab Bag will really help to 3 star MF as soon as possible. Itemization is very simple with this comp, you want Gwinsu's plus any AD items you can find on MF, any AP items onto Bard, and any tank items onto Nico or Echo. If you can't manage to build Last Whisper on Emma, then make sure you build Even Shroud on one of your tanks, as Armor Shred is a must. In the early game, look for an AD item holder start with any frontline you can 2 star. Corky or Jinx are great options, as they are the best item holders for the MF items you want to build. If you find a Superfan star, then that is a good board to go with, as this plays both Kennen and Lilia, which you can find early on. Going into the mid game, you want to follow a standard leveling strategy until you hit level 7 this being level 6 at 3-2 and 7 around 4-1. From there you want to sell your headliner and roll for any of the MF headliner versions. After that it's just a case of slow rolling for MF3. My typical strategy for slow rolling for 3 cost units is to roll 10 gold for every copy of the unit you see. If you don't see one after rolling 10 gold, then stop rolling and econ back up before doing so again unless you're very unhealthy and need to go all in to survive. Once you hit MF3, you can then look at going to level 8 or even 9 depending on how healthy you are and slotting in Lucian for additional jazz bonuses or more frontline to buy time for your MF to kill the enemy board. A pivot option for this comp is to skip slow rolling at level 7 for MF3 and instead go 8 to play the big shot Ezreal board I went through earlier. Depending on how committed you were to rolling, this should be a solid comp to pivot to, but it really depends on how early you decide to pivot. I would suggest always scouting the other players to find out how contested you are before over committing to any comp. You want style? You found her. This next comp has been by far the most consistent comp in set 10. It's received very little changes every patch and still continues to hold a solid top 4 rate. This patch has given Urgot a slight rework with less damage, but more single target damage, which won't make a huge difference to the overall placement. It's a dual 3 cost carry comp that looks to 3 star both Samira and Urgot, along with any of the other 3 cost units you have. And for your headliner, you really want Country as the plus 1 trait, so you don't have to run Katarina. But the actual unit doesn't matter too much. In most cases, this will be Samira or Urgot. As this is a reroll comp, any augments that help that, such as Army Building, Trade Sector, or Prismatic Ticket, are a solid pickup. Three's a Crowd is by far the best augment for this comp as if you find it the average placements for it skyrockets, as the majority of your board are 3 cost units. For itemization, you should look to focus on Samira, but if you find yourself picking up more Urgots and think you'll 3 star him much earlier than Samira, then you can look at prioritising his itemization. but remember that Last Whisper is a must for the armor shred. The other main unit you want to itemise is your tank, which in this case is Thresh. I've suggested 3 premium tank items, but just build whatever tank items you can find. In the early game, the only country unit at 1 cost is Tom Kench, so you'll struggle to hit country at 2-1, but if you get lucky with the loot orbs and hit another country unit, you should breathe through the early game. 
The other opener I've suggested is Heart Steel, as this will allow you to get some extra Econ to hit level 7 quicker, and it has good item holders in Aphelios for Samira's items. In the mid game you want to activate 5 Country as soon as possible, and if you don't have Samira or Urgot as your headliner by the time you hit level 7, you should sell your headliner and do a slight roll down to get one of them as your headliner. From there you're really just looking to slow roll for 3 star Samira or Urgot before going to level 8. The late game for this comp is really leveling to 8 once you've hit everything else, and slotting in one of the strong frontline 5 cost units like a Lowry or Yorick. This isn't really a composition that needs to reach high levels to get top 4 finishes, and the success really sits upon you 3 star in your 3 cost unit. One to seal. This is a 3 cost reroll comp, with Yoni as your main carry mixed with Crowd Divers, Edgelords and Pentakill. The headliner you want is of course Yone, and ideally with the plus 1 to Crowd Diver, but if you find the Edgelord variant, you can look at going 5 Edgelord without it making a huge difference to your overall placement. Augments you want to be looking out for are any of the reroll or survivability related ones. As this is a melee carry composition, your carry is a big target in the front line, so any augments that can help with survivability work very well. The standout augment I would be looking out for is Vampirism, as it provides so much value and scales as you get later into the game. If you find Not Today or Idealism, then they both give great survivability and you can look at building additional ones to put on Zed. For itemization, you want to prioritise survivability items on Yone, such as BT, Hodge and Titans, but items such as QSS and Edge of Night work just as well. Prioritising survivability AD items over pure AD items will work much better, as he already does enough damage through his ability. The secondary carry you can itemise once you've finished itemising Yone is Zed, However, if you do get the Edgelord headliner of Yone, then you should look to itemise Viego as he will be stronger than Zed if you go for the 5 Edgelord comp. For the early game, some good openers to look out for are either Superfan, Edgelord or Pentakill, and of course Heartsteel as they all have good item holders for Yone and slot in well to the end composition as you're levelling up. Level up to 4 at 2-1 unless you have a lot of pairs and don't find a good headliner in the opening 3 rounds. Your main goal is to play the strongest board you can until you get to the mid game where you find your key units. Going into the mid game, you want to follow a standard leveling strategy until you hit level 7. This being level 6 at 3-2 and 7 around 4-1. From there you want to slow roll for Yone 3. If the lobby is fairly weak you can look at putting heart steel for some extra loot whilst you're slow rolling, but don't try this if you're losing rounds drastically as you'll most likely be unable to recover once you hit 3 star Yone. Once you do manage to 3 star Yone, you should look to level to 8 and try to find your 4 and 5 cost crowd diver units to cap your board. A 3 star Yone without your board cap should still be a top 4, but getting the 4 crowd diver trait active should get you a much higher placement. The comp you can pivot to if contested is 8 bit Riven. She received a slight damage nerf this patch, but I still think it should be a solid top 4 comp. If you want to learn more about this comp, I've released an in depth one trick guide on this, which you can check out with the link in the description below. And that's it for this guide, I hope you found it helpful and good luck with climbing in the new patch, I'll see you in the next one.